Hello everybody and welcome! Today we're going to have a look at Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. Why are we doing this? Well, the reason is very simple. This update may be a small increment on paper, but there are a lot of changes under the hood. For instance, these two little parts, those are new engines, meaning basically you can do a helicopter and a propeller engine powered by fuel and not just electric current as before. What arrives with that are also new helicopter and propeller blades. They come in three sizes, each small, medium and large. And the same, of course, also for the small propeller. You can, of course, use uh, these propeller uh, blades also on the regular electric motors that have already been introduced with the braking ground expansion that we talked about a while back. Speaking of these motors, there have now been some changes. There is the usual light duty motor like this, and then there is a variant with a smaller rotor head you can see over here. Same with the standard rotor and its new variant, and then also for the heavy rotor. And of course, it also got a variant with a smaller head. So, make of that what you will, but these are the new parts that you get with this update. Also new are grip pads. Well, there are interesting little changes in here. They are very small, small and not so small. And you can change them to square or round. And if you hear hammering in the background, that are my neighbors, because they have decided to basically uh, destroy their entire flat today and I have no idea when they will stop with that, so I decided to record this anyway. Alright, these grip pads, well, I believe that they are designed to be used as sort of foots for Mac type vehicles or something like that, but I haven't had the time to try them out yet. What I have been able to try out are some propeller things. And let's have a look at that. Where are you? There are too many vehicles in here. Alright, so here is my airplane and let's have a look at these parts over here. Why am I looking at the propeller and the and the rotor or motor? Well, let's talk about that in a little while, but while we're here, let's show you something what this little new button does. Basically what this little button here is doing is enabling you to add numbers in here with your keyboard. So you can now set these slider here more precisely because it's been quite a pain in the behind to set these the way you want it if you wanted to just give one increment or a tenth of an increment or something like that. Okay, you see the rotor rotating. Uh, the engine rotating but yeah why and the fuel is being consumed it needs fuel and air but why are we not moving well the reason for this is the propeller blades those can be adjusted and what i've done is if you set this to deploy then suddenly the rotors will shift and the plane will start accelerating what i also did was to add an action group to a translation control so I could increase or decrease the authority limiter of that propeller and yeah that did not work out as I intended again all right let's try this again okay I've already deployed the propeller now I've activated SAS as well and I am now engaging my engine there we go Propeller is propelling and gingerly we're taking to the skies. Let's retract that landing gear and there we go. We have a propeller airplane. Now this is rather slow, but if you enjoy these type of things instead of jet engines, well now you can do so. 
Now let's take a look at this helicopter contraption that I made. Uh, you can see here I have used the large blades and if I set my action group in motion then you can see that these blades change their rotation. So this is going to affect how that chopper is going to chop. Alright, same of course with the rotor in the back. Let's get going. And immediately we have some rotation going on, but I can adjust that with the back rotor. And we're flying towards the side now. Oh well, at least we're flying, right? <laughs> Anyhow, let's try to... Nope, not landing. Yes, there we go. By adjusting the basically the pitch of the main rotor, I can adjust the rate of descent without having to slow down or speed up the motor itself. So yeah, it could be more stable, but yeah, it, it, it flies. I mean, this is the first thing I ever built in regards to these new propellers in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. If you notice in the middle, since these rotors have separate joints, which acts as uh, uh, these propellers have separate joints that act as rotors, uh, they kind of move through the engine part. If you if you look very closely down in the middle, um, yeah, that, that, that's that's a bit weird, but hmm. Maybe this can be remedied in a future update or something like that. And now I'm in an uncontrolled spin and probably going to crash, right? Yeah, thought so. Oh well. Another interesting thing is a new feature that is called same vessel interaction. If you look at the part on the left hand side, the part has been set to yes and this over here has been set to no. Otherwise both are completely identical and the rotors are unmotorized so they are just uh, ball joints basically. Now if I throttle up my wheels you may notice that the contraption on the left hand side is starting to spin while the one on the right hand side isn't. That is because this structural tube part here and this, uh, uh, and this wheel over here are now thinking that they are basically the same thing and they don't, uh, aren't allowed to interact with each other. These over here on the other hand, they are. and. Well, I'm pretty sure there can be some nice little things you can do with this. For instance, some cogwheels or steamboat type things or whatever. So this is quite an interesting little tweak to uh, what was previously not possible. Another thing that they added is the remove symmetry option for everything. Well, in KSP 1.2, to breaking ground, 1.7.2, I'm getting my numbers mixed up over here, you had this option to remove the symmetry from, uh, the, um, the, from the robotic parts so that you could set this here for instance to uh, clockwise rotation and the other one to counterclockwise rotation. Well, these parts over here, they are now still in symmetry but the rotors aren't. But if I remove the symmetry from this here, I can now also do what I want with this without affecting the other. So this feature has been extended to every part now and not just to anything from the breaking ground expansion. Speaking of new things, there is now an ejection force slider you can set to your external command seats. If you look closely, you can see that the command seat for Jebediah is set to zero. So if I leave his, uh, if you, I make him leave his seat, he jumps up a little bit, but that's basically it. Now, if we do the same thing to Valentina and the ejection force is set to 100, let's see what happens. Whoa! You almost need a parachute for this to work. <laughs> 
Anyhow, this is a fun little feature. Uh, I'm not sure what's the point of it though, but I am pretty sure all of you are going to uh, find some very interesting use cases for this. Now, the final thing I want to show you, which has changed in Kerbal Space Program 173, is something that has to do with docking. If you have a vessel that is docked with multiple docking ports like this, Previously, if you undocked one of the docking ports, it would undock the other ones as well. But here it doesn't. So here now I have to undock the second port as well. Okay, another thing that uh, they changed with docking is something called the acquire force. If you look over here, it's set to 100. I'm going to set this to zero and I'm going to increase this to 200. And I'm going to do the same with the opposing ports on the other vessel. Okay, what's going to happen now? With this feature you can adjust how fast or how powerful docking ports are going to attract each other. And this might also have some interesting applications, uh, but you're going to have to experiment with this yourself. But here, take a look. It was just a subtle discrepancy or a subtle difference compared to uh, if I would have docked this with the same force. But you have seen that the lower docking ports were attracted to each other way faster than the top ones. So yeah, another quality of life upgrade in regards to docking. There have also been some additional features and changes to how that KAL-1000 controller is working and what you can do. Although I'm not sure whether or not this feature was already added in 1.7.2 because there were some additional things they did in that as well. All right, that docking thing plays into if you want to, for instance, do something like this, a space shuttle with a grabber arm. Now we have our dock over here. And of course, we now want to just undock the payload. The idea is that only the payload is going to be undocked, but not this docking port over here. So keep a close watch on this undock indicator here. And... Boom! Yes, we managed to do this. So, the payload is now free. I mean, it looks totally weird, but... Yeah, so that's it. And I still have it attached onto my arm. And everything is wobbling again, so... Go away! Yeah, space catapults, aren't they fun? All right, and with this I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a compilation of one of the things I tried doing with this update, which is some sort of Osprey-style rotor-type vehicle. Yeah, so Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. It might be a minor version, but there are some significant changes in this update. So, have you already taken a look at the changes? What do you think about it? Again, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if we enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and maybe activate the notification bell down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.